Hello and welcome back to another episode of the weekly news on the For the Property Investor podcast. And of course, the only man who can bring the news is Nick Bendel. Welcome, Nick. Great to be here, Owen. Legally, no one else is allowed to bring the news other than me. Yes, yes. Like it, it literally would not happen without you. It can't. It, it can't and it won't. And I'm delighted to be back. And for the second week in a row, in the final week, I'm recording not in Sydney, where I live, but in Darwin, where I'm wearing a t shirt and shorts. Yeah, yeah. While the rest of us here are shivering in single digit temperatures uh on an early monday morning but um we'll 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 move on from that because we don't want to hear it anymore it's uh, uh what what's been happening in your work week nick well since we last spoke my business hunter and scribe which is a copywriting agency that writes content for finance and property professionals uh we've been helping a buyer's agent with a rising star of the year award submission. Uh, she's very talented and has done a lot in a short amount of time. And it's a great pleasure to help her prepare this award submission. Oh, good to hear. Good to hear. And um, yes, for us the, this past week, uh, probably one of my busiest weeks ever with, um, uh, we've onboarded two new buyers agents as business partners of ours. And had meetings with probably another three or four, I think, and uh, to discuss the opportunity. Because, um, d sorry to interrupt, Owen. So, so when you say uh, you've onboarded a couple of buyers agents as business partners, are you, are you able to explain to everyone what what your partnership model is? Oh yes, yes. So, so effectively, Le Leafield is a uh, national property management business, as we've discussed before. But we partner with other licensed agents uh, uh, across the country to be able to um, uh, give them the opportunity to build a rent roll asset. So effectively, we're a 100% outsourced solution for them to be able to build a rent roll. Now, uh, that includes sales agents, uh, but the national focus buyers agent seems to be the one that it uh, is most attractive to. And they're the ones that... Um, we're working with the most so um we even have other property managers who want to expand their geographic footprint mm -hmm. and they leverage off our services to be able to do the same as well so yeah something of a uh, a bit of a different business model to the normal real estate business but it's all about helping the property investor in the first place and being able to work with other licensed agents to be able to help them grow their business and look after their clients. What a, it, It's a fantastic solution. And I've spoken to a lot of property people over the years who love the idea of building a rent roll, but they what holds them back is, oh God, I guess now I've got a hire a property management person and, and that's going to be a big upfront cost and then I have to train them what if it doesn't work out and I've got to get all this new software and all these new systems and it's just too hard. They know what a good investment is but the upfront time and, and cost often holds them back but if they can partner with a company like you and, and Leefield, it, it's a great win-win outcome. Yes, well, they don't have to have all of those headaches. Uh, we've already got those headaches. <laughs> and um, so uh, we, we we might as well just, uh, you know, uh, help, help them and uh, help us get more business as well uh, to be able to uh, still have those headaches, but uh, do it a bit easier with, with more business. Um, so... Yeah, that's that's our business model. So uh, thank you for the prompt to help me explain, Nick. Well, my pleasure. And shall we move on to the first of our three news stories? Yes, what have we got in the news this week? Well, the first one is why higher rates haven't led to lower prices. When the Reserve Bank started raising the cash rate in May 2022, many experts thought that property prices would fall. However, by May 2024, even though the cash rate had risen from 0.1% to 4.35%, the 
the nation's median property price had increased 6.2% according to PropTrack. So why didn't higher rates lead to lower prices? Well, to quote PropTrack senior economist L. Cray, resilient labour market conditions, strong population growth, tight rental market, home equity gains, low stock on market, and an undersupply of new homes have offset the significant reduction in borrowing capacities and deterioration in affordability that came with substantial interest rate tightening, keeping prices resistant to the falls the calculated shift in borrowing capacities would imply in many markets. Owen, if you cast your mind back to May 2022, were you one of the many people who assumed that higher rates, higher rates would lead to lower prices? Uh, yes, I was. And, and in fact, it, it did load, lead to lower prices in the short term. Mm. Um, so in that sort of first nine months, we definitely saw, saw a, a, a easing off and, and definitely in Sydney, prices came back by about 10%. But since then, they've uh, fully recovered. The market got used to the new interest rate environment especially once they uh, started easing the rate rises and the market took off again and not as hard and fast as it was uh, before that, but it was certainly still uh, growing uh, mainly because of uh, the, the uh, factors that were uh, just that you just quoted in terms of strong population growth, tight rental markets, uh, low stock on market and undersupply of new homes. All of those factors have contributed. And uh, uh, if, if we took off at least two of those, you know, it would it would help the problem of of continuing uh, the uh, rising home values uh, that we've seen so, for so so many years. Mm. Let me flip this round for you. A lot of people have been saying that if and when interest rates start falling, that will lead to higher prices. Now, if higher rates didn't lead to lower prices, should we now question whether lower rates will lead to higher prices? Um, well, it would. If rates were lower than they were now, then we would have even even higher prices than we have now. So it's certainly a factor. And yes, if, if rates did fall, then it, then it would make it easier for more people to be able to borrow, borrow more money. Uh, so it's uh, having, higher price, having higher interest rates definitely does make it um, harder for people to borrow. And um, so, yeah, yes. Uh, lowering interest rates would mean higher prices. Hmm. I, I remember years ago, I heard a prominent buyer's agent make the argument that the availability of credit is the number one factor that influences property prices. What do you think has a bigger impact on prices, interest rates or the, avail or the availability of credit? Um, Do you want to explain the context of the difference between those two um, factors? So, so by the by the availability of credit, you might recall back in, was it uh, kind of 2017, 2018, when, re when APRA really tightened the screws? Yeah. And then we had the Royal Commission when, oh, when yes. lenders voluntarily tightened the screws and were reluctant to give out credit. Yes, yeah, so le lending policies uh, in, in regards to the availability of credit, um, that that was is definitely the, the the number one thing that can drive borrowing. It's if it's easier to borrow and e easier to uh, uh, to qualify and under bank lending policies, then yes, it's 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 definitely easier to borrow. More people can do it, and um, that that would absolutely affect uh, property prices more. Uh, because you've got a uh, a broader part of the population that can that can borrow more money. Well, great conversation, Owen, and I'm keen to 
get your insights into the next story. Speaking of conversations, a panel of 29 economists assembled by the Conversation website has forecast that better economic times lie ahead. On average, the panel of 29 economists forecasts the cash rate will fall from 4.35% now to 4% by June 2025. Inflation will fall from 4% now to 2.9% by June next year, which would put inflation within the RBA's target range. Unemployment will rise from 4% now to 4.4% by June next year. And Australia will not slip into recession. I mean, the average result among the 29 economists, as I said, was that the cash rate will fall from 4.35% now to 4% by June. However, of those 29 economists, four think the cash rate will remain unchanged at 4.35%, while one actually expects the cash rate will increase to 4.85%. What do you expect? Well, it sounds like this group of economists have got a, a, a very um, um, positive outlook setting in their crystal balls. Um, it's, you know, I, I can't call myself an economist, so I, I can't put myself in, the, in their same category. But, you know, if, if you ask uh, five different economists, you usually get five different answers. Okay. It's, it's, so th this is unusual to get so many in the same room saying the same thing. Maybe they were all in the same room, and that might be the uh, contributing factor as to uh, why they are all getting a, a similar answer. So it's, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball at all, and I don't, you know, uh, even if I did have one, I don't think I would have um, be able to change the setting on it to optimistic or pessimistic. So um, I'm sitting on the fence. Who knows? What's going to happen? Mm, it's well, yeah, we, we've we've got um, you know, lots of lo lots of things to happen in the next twelve months. Yeah, we've got a a, a U.S. election um, to to happen. We've got uh, quite possibly a, an Australian federal election to happen, and um, it's and we just had uh, some pretty major tax cuts. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, come into effect in the last couple of weeks, and so who knows what's that going to have? What the effect that's going to have to uh, inflation? So, I would just say wait and see. Interestingly, none of the nine economists expect Australia to enter recession. Does that surprise you? Actually, that that's where I I I would uh, definitely agree. I, I'd. I don't see us slipping into recession because we have had far too much population growth and it seems to continue to to keep on going, um, which will drive that. Uh, they have to, and as a result, the, the property market and in terms of from a construction point of view has to keep ticking along and they have to drive that. So that, always keeps the uh, Australian economy ticking along quite well. It's just this balance between inflation and interest rates. And you know, in the next three months, we need to get on top of that. So I'd be much more comfortable making that call in about three months' time when we have more information. <laughs> Speaking of, speaking of inflation, on average, on the 29 economists expect inflation to fall into the Reserve Bank's target range by June 2025. If and when that happens, Owen, will we be able to declare victory in the war on inflation? Oh, yes, no matter when it falls into the target range. But, um, but, but trying to wrestle and, and beat inflation is... It's, um, it's like it's like trying to uh, hold on to a a, a fresh slippery eel. It's um, it, it it's something that uh, is a delicate operation, and you have to constantly change your grip and and make sure you're on top of it. I'm quite hawkish when it comes to inflation. I I think 
interest rates, I, I, I think the RBA should keep interest rates higher for longer. And even if inflation <clears throat> does get into the target band, I, I kind of think they should probably still keep rates higher for longer just to make sure inflation is crushed once and for all. Yes, well, e even at the current interest rate that we have, it's still historically fairly low. And I think we need to get used to uh, interest rates being at, at this level uh, as the new norm, uh, because it's not really new. It's the old norm. Uh, it's uh, where they should be. And it's, um, you know, it, it should be quite manageable at these levels. Well, let's move on to our final story, Owen. Rental market appears to be slowing. Domain data shows that rental growth slowed noticeably in the second quarter of this year. Between the March and June quarters, median house rents, and so not property, but median house rents, increased by 1.8% in Melbourne, 1.6% in Brisbane, 1.5% in Darwin, 0.8% in Adelaide, 07 in Canberra, 0% in Sydney and Perth, and minus 1.8% in Hobart. Domain's Chief of Research and Economics, Nicola Powell, said that while the rental market typically slows down in winter, this slowdown appears to be the result of cyclical rather than seasonal causes. To quote, many cities are seeing the weakest outcome for a June quarter in a number of years. It shows that strong rates of rental are likely to be behind us. Some cities are now seeing no gross over the quarter. A couple of them declined, which is quite unusual, given the fact that we've still got vacancy rates technically in the landlord's market. It means that the affordability ceiling is being reached and budgets have been stretched to their max. Owen, does what you're seeing on the ground match Nicola Powell's commentary that rental growth appears to be slowing? Oh, yes, absolutely, especially in Sydney and Perth. Um, it, even though it's it's not the case in every single market within those within those macro markets uh it's yeah we, we're, we're surprised we'll have an open home with in one suburb and you will have 20 or 30 groups through through with you know 15 applications uh, and then in another suburb it's you know sitting there for a couple of weeks with not much inquiry so it's uh but on an average across the board to see that happen on a regular basis where it's not every single property is getting leased in the first week with multiple applications uh that's definitely showing us that there is a a shift in the market and yes there's some areas and some types of properties uh becoming more popular but that'll shift and change as as markets, and, and that really comes comes down to how much stock levels are on the market in that particular, say, suburb or that particular type of um, property, and uh, versus others. And we've seen the same in Perth as well, as mm -hmm. new properties are coming onto the market in some particular areas. It's uh, it's releasing a lot more supply. And this is a direct uh, example of the whole supply and demand thing. You know, it's not this neoliberalism, you know, fantasy land that, um, you know, these, uh, some section of the community just doesn't understand. It, it is the number one factor that determines the price, supply and demand. It's, and... Uh, this happening right now is good news for everyone because this will have this is one of the major factors that influence inflation figures so going back to our previous story if we will if we want to see inflation coming down we need rents to stop increasing so much so, Nicola Powell, this, yeah. so i was going to say nicola Powell made the point that this slowdown in rental growth is occurring even though vacancy rates aren't rising so mm. is she right, Owen, to say that this slowdown is being caused by stretched affordability? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with several cases all of the time where 
uh, we have tenants that are in financial distress and we're working with them and working with community groups who are helping them to um, keep their rent paid and keep a roof over their head uh, while we are trying to work with them to be able to find something that's more affordable for them at the same time. And so it, it's it's a difficult period of time and a difficult job uh, for us to manage that. So when it comes to um, this supply and demand issue, if people can't afford extra money, then they're not going to offer extra money mm -hmm. to be able to get the property. And that's what happens when there is high demand. It's not necessarily the the nasty landlords or the nasty real estate agents who are asking for more money. It's the prospective tenants who are offering more money to be able to get to the front of the line. That's what pushes up prices. Uh, in most states now, we're not even allowed to, and especially in New South Wales, uh, where I am, you, we're not allowed to even ask tenants to offer more money. But if they offer it themselves without being asked, then that's what pushes prices up. Mm. So, so, if, and so when if and when tenants, tenants do reach their do affordability reach limit, does that mean rents might start falling? Uh, there's every possibility. <laughs> because what happens is, and we're seeing this with um, some properties now where it looked like, say, a month ago, that we could ask for, for example, 700 a week for a property. And then over that period of time, there has been a lot more supply come on in that particular market. And so if you had five properties on the market that were comparable, and now suddenly there's 20 plus properties on the market that are comparable, and other properties are now asking 650 a week or 620 a week, then guess what? Your property at 700 a week doesn't get any inquiry. It doesn't get any applications. So you need to start dropping your prices. So that is happening now, not in every market across you know, every capital city, but in small pockets around the place, it, it is happening. And it um, doesn't mean it'll last for a long time. Once that supply gets taken up, then uh, prices might stabilise at around that at, at, at that level, or they could start to go up again if there's a lack of supply. Hmm. Well, uh, Owen, th thank you for another great chat. I always love your insights. You offer so much value. Part of me thinks we should start charging for this podcast, but then that would maybe <laughs> play havoc with the Reserve Bank's attempts to reduce inflation. Yes, I know. But it's it's good to be able to try and cut through all of misinformation that's put out there by a lot of uneducated, ignorant people who would like to just have quick fixes uh, without actually thinking through or understanding the uh bigger issues and the complex issues that uh, uh are causing these issues for us in our society normally i would say i'm looking forward to speaking to you next week but next week i'm going to be back in sydney where it's cold so i don't know if i'm looking forward to it all that much well well technically this is the middle of winter right now today so in a week it might be a little warmer well, on that very, very optimistic note, Owen, thank you for a great <laughs> chat and see you next week. All right. See you then, Nick. Thank you very much.